ready? Ruth Ann, you guys can sit there. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Liz. Yeah. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It's so nice to have some faces to see out there and some of you got to see kind of my uh, prep before worship starts, all the fine tuning that it takes and now that we have people here I realize I need a microphone up here not just for the camera but for you. So um, we need to I'll get that sorted out. So there's a lot to think about as we regather here in person. So um, I welcome you to this time, into this space, and into God's presence as we interrupt our weekly routine to gather and remember that God's presence is with us, not just in this hour, but with us all the time. 
And so as we gather, I do have a handful of announcements. Uh, one, I had them up on the screen as you come in. That will be our practice. So if you do come in a little bit before worship starts, pay attention to what's up on the screen. Uh, milk and eggs for social services will be delivered this Wednesday. The church office hours are back to normal. So you can bring them in Monday or Tuesday between 9.30 and 1. Janet should be in the office. So if the fellowship hall or kitchen doors are not unlocked, she should be in the office to let you in with milk and eggs. Um, deacons are meeting this Wednesday night. And um, I did talk with the family of Stephen Gonzalez. His memorial service will be Saturday, June 19th at 11. So we still have some time into the future. They wanted to have it close to his birthday. Um, so that was the date that works for the family. So we continue to hold Debbie in our prayers during this time. And um, I did have another announcement, of course, I always start to blank. I want to thank Amy for singing today and for the charm choir that has been practicing and then put on hiatus and then back together again. Since we can't have our choir singing yet, we um, have adapted and this wonderful group has come together to play the charms for us. Um, so we welcome you all and thank you all for using your gifts with us today in worship. Uh, so if I remember that other, oh, one great hour sharing. So any of our virtual gatherings today, um, if any of our children still have their fish, please bring your fish back in. And it's not too late to make a gift to the one great hour of sharing. All right, so um, Dave, you're doing our call to worship, and I'm sorry we're sharing a microphone. I'm vaccinated. <laughs> you come up here. Good morning. Let's please join together in reading the responsive call to worship as uh, printed and on the screen, uh, written today by Cynthia Langston Kirk. Welcome to a time of wonder and music that calls us home. Welcome to hear God's words that inspire and challenge and to reminders that we are offered holy hospitality. Hospitality that teaches us how to open our lives to others, leading us to fully live open minds, open hearts, and open doors. Our opening hymn this morning will be Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
off script and say that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, please join me as we listen for the, the word of God and the prayer is written by Cynthia Langston Kirk. Take us deep into the heart of hospitality. Help us to understand that the generosity the world needs often demands sacrifice on our part. Be with those who have never known a table blessed by laughter and welcome, who have seldom heard affirmations, and who do not know your abiding love. Remind us, O oh God, that we are to set many tables, to speak blessings often, and to be your love in the world. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Here are these words written by Paul in his letter to the Romans. He says, if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of, the, of God? Who indeed intercedes for us? Friends, this is the good news. And now as God's people here in this place, whether we're gathered virtually or together in person, we invite you, still physically distanced, to share the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> peace, everyone. Peace, peace, peace. And then our hymn to follow is Open My Eyes That I May See. Thank you. 
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Hebrews 13. There are four verses, uh, 2, 16, 20, and 21. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. There were several Sundays when we had our soloists here, and it was just Jane, myself, Savannah, and the soloist, and I would say to them, we have a clapping congregation, and I just want to let you know they'd be clapping right now, <laughs> so I acknowledge your, uh, your clapping to them, and it is so nice to hear it once again. So, um, our second passage today is from the Gospel of Luke. And this is a continuation of the story 
uh, that we would have heard last week, the walk to Emmaus. So there was a group of disciples that had seen Jesus, the risen Jesus, on that Easter day, and they had come back to the other disciples to tell them what they had seen. And that's where we pick up here. It says, while they, that is that group of disciples, were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, I forgot to grab the microphone, and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. While, and when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were, and while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning... From Jerusalem. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And next week I'm going to mark my scripture where the slides change. <laughs> I am on a learning curve here, <laughs> so bear with me. Oh, goodness. So as we slowly emerge from this pandemic, the church leadership has established three areas of growth and development that we are seeking to live into. And so those three areas are building community, <coughs> hospitality, and feeding others. And if you didn't notice yet, the theme in our liturgy has been around hospitality. So that's my focus for today. So one of my biggest concerns as we gather back in person is to ensure that we don't have to turn anyone away. So my prayers were answered today. We have plenty of space for people to physically distance and still be here present together. Um, I would hate for us to have to say to anyone as we want to seek to practice hospitality, we just can't fit everyone in. Although in a way it's a good problem to have. Um, it's just not very welcoming. So how do we balance hospitality with limitations? Because in life there always will be limitations. So we will do what we can do to ensure we can offer hospitality to the limit of what our abilities are. So during COVID, hospitality has been extremely challenging. Many of you realize and have struggled with and have actually grieved that we can't do our normal forms of gathering with each other, right? Celebrating holidays and birthdays and other special occasions together with our friends and our neighbors. Now, there are people that have gotten extremely creative and have had Zoom dinner parties where they've set the table and shared the menu and set the computer down right there on the dinner table and eaten the same meal, just in two different locations. <laughs> or like one of our neighbors that are newer, they moved in right when COVID hit. Um, 
they decided at Christmas that they were going to just bake everyone in the neighborhood cookies and put them in a cute little bag with a little note that introduced themselves to the neighborhood. Um, and so now at least we know their names. <laughs> so, right, there's creative ways and it was, it was cute. So we wore our masks while making the cookies and they listed the ingredients, another act of hospitality in case anyone had allergies, right? They really thought through the way they were going to do this. It was, it was really a great example of creative hospitality. So how has your practice of hospitality changed this year, right? It has, whether we're aware of it or not. We have had to change our practice of hospitality. Um, I saw on the news that there was this neighborhood that decided that no matter what the weather, at a certain time every day, they were still, they were going to have happy hour together. So rain, snow, whatever, they set up their lawn chairs and went out into the streets in this little neighborhood and had a drink together. Um, I've heard of people uh, tailgating, kind of backing cars up into a circle and sitting at their trunks and having a picnic together, right? And now that the weather is improving, hopefully we can gather outside in ways that um, we can still physically distance, but be a little more social. But it's all about hospitality, right? We are social beings. We crave to be together. And so um, we have to get creative, right? Hospitality has to adapt to these times. So when we socialize, depending on the location, relationships are usually divided into two roles, right? There is the guest. And there is the host. And there's usually some pressure on both sides to follow social protocols, right? If you're the guest, perhaps you want to make sure that you're a good guest. And you might put some thought into, well, what hostess gift should I bring? Should we just grab a bottle of wine or should I... Um, get a candle or should I bring some soap? You know, sometimes people overthink. Um, or you might ask, you know, if you're having a meal together, can we bring the dessert or can we bring something, right? You want to be a good guest and contribute to the relationship that is happening. And there is pressure on the host, right? How is, is my house clean? <laughs> and wanting to make sure that your guests are comfortable and that they have a good time. Well, Jesus has never been one to follow social protocols. So as the leader of his group, he's the teacher, he's the rabbi. He has established authority, which usually brings, you know, kind of a higher social standing. And yet he models over and over again that he has come to serve and not to be served. And so I asked, does that mean is he the goal, the ghost, is he the host? <laughs> Excuse me. Is he the host or the guest? Got my letters mixed up there. Is he the host or is he the guest? Right? The host is usually the one that you know serves, and the guest is usually the one being served, at least in our day and age, in our culture. Unless, of course, you have enough money to hire staff, right? If you are having a big party, maybe you're having it catered, so you don't have to serve. You can enjoy being the host, and you can let the paid staff do the work. It's an interesting thing to think about, because when Jesus washes the disciples' feet, he actually is not taking the role of either guest, or host. He's taking the role of servant, and he uses that statement, right? The, the, the servant, we call it servant leadership. But that breaks our understanding of social relationships, right? Guest or host, wait a minute, now he's servant? That's someone completely out of the social dynamic that's been created altogether. Now, there are times when Jesus is very clear 
that it's very clear in the text that he is the host. And then there's other times it's very clear that he's the guest, like in the Mary Martha story, right? They, he's come to their house and he is the guest. But there's a handful of times where he becomes the servant. Now, I don't think this would be a role that we would be overly comfortable with when we gather with our friends, right? Like when we have parties, when you think about servants rather than being the host, it, it might make us uncomfortable. It would make me extremely uncomfortable if I was hosting a dinner party and a guest arrived and decided to do the role of a servant, such as becoming my house cleaner. <laughs> right? That would embarrass me. It would show me I didn't do a good enough role as the host, and now a guest is doing something that, that should have happened before they arrived. Um, right? So that, that servant thing can, can actually be an embarrassing thing that happens in social dynamics. So, you know, we pay attention to how are we behaving in relationships when it comes to hospitality. So on the second Sunday of Easter, we are still immersed in the Easter story. It's perhaps even the same day that the women have arrived to the empty tomb, or perhaps it's very early Monday morning um, as Jesus appears to this, these disciples. And as he appears to them, right, this dynamic is happening. This group of, of followers, this group of believers, this group of, of people that have been together and, and seen Jesus at work and ha, are grieving his death, right? He appears to them, meeting them in their doubt. And he does what he can to prove that he has truly been resurrected from the dead. And as I mentioned, this is a continuation of the story that we call the walk to Emmaus. These few travelers left Jerusalem, kind of given up on the story. Like Jesus died, these women said that he's risen, but we're just heading home. Like, we're done with this, it's not what we expected, and, and it's time to go home. Um, they're so dismayed, and they're lamenting this. Like a stranger comes and joins them on the road, and, and they're talking to him, and they're lament, and they're dismayed that Jesus was killed, and they're just pouring it out. And it's once they arrive to Emmaus in hospitality, they invite this stranger to have dinner with them, that they finally realize this isn't a stranger after all, but it's Jesus. How did they not know? But it's in that act of hospitality, that act in breaking bread together, that their eyes are open and they realize who is present with them. And so here we are. That was so powerful to them that they couldn't stay in Emmaus. They quickly returned to Jerusalem. So again, as I said, probably in the middle of the night, to tell the others, to tell the others of what had happened. And Jesus appears again, right? So they saw him in Emmaus, and now he's back with them in Jerusalem, and he says, peace be with you. Now, earlier in Luke, when Jesus sends 70 to go out to surrounding towns to find a place to stay and to bring the word of God into those towns, Jesus tells them the first thing that they are to say when they find a house is peace to this house. So as you arrive asking somebody for hospitality, you say to them, peace. So now we have Jesus showing up with this group and saying to them, peace. Peace. Jesus is modeling his own instructions. He's showing up in this particular place, in this particular time, offering peace. Now, in reading this text, there's all kinds of themes that I could focus on. But for some reason, hospitality is really what was speaking to me this week. 
So although Jesus is very much the leader of this group, and he could have shown up and taken control and become the host and, and been in charge, he's still taking a step back. Right? He's allowing the others to process what is happening right there before them. Their teacher, their leader, their friend, the one that they had witnessed his death was standing before them. Now, they had heard twice now that Jesus had risen from the dead, once from the women and once from those that had gone to Emmaus. And now they're seeing it firsthand right there before them. And they are still amazed. They are still doubtful. They're confused and they're even terrified. And they're wondering if they've seen a ghost. Right? And so in this strange dynamic that is happening amongst them, Jesus disrupts the confusion by asking for something to eat. In a way, he is making this unexplainable situation normal. Well, he's the guest. It's the right thing to do to give your guests some food. Right? What we normally do when we gather together, we eat. So in the midst of all of this confusion, he assigns the others the role of host and asks, asks them to get him some fish. And they do. So sometimes, in the midst of all, all of our distractions, in all of our confusions, our doubts, our questions, it might just help to break some normalcy into it. And so Jesus allows the others to enter the role of hospitality, giving them a small sense of control in this extremely unexplainable moments. Now, for some people, there is a yearning for the sacred to break into life abundantly. We want to see it all the time. And for others, there's a sense of caution that if we encounter the sacred in our lives, it, it might change us. It, it might call us to something that we're not ready to be called into. And it can be frightening. And so as we look at this text, we realize that God does break into our lives. Whether we're expecting it or not. Whether we're believing it or not. Whether we've already heard the story a couple times and we still aren't really sure when we're seeing it firsthand if it truly is God at work. That's how persistent our God is. And so I paired today's passage with the one from Hebrews that says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Those followers on the road to Emmaus did not know Jesus was the stranger, but they showed hospitality, and there he was. So when we show hospitality to others, we are invited to see the face of Christ within them. And so maybe, maybe during this time of COVID, with all the isolation and stress this pandemic has placed upon us, the questions, the confusion, maybe even the doubts we've had over the past year, perhaps, perhaps some sacred hospitality is what we need. Hospitality is a place where God can enter our lives, our relationships, our fellowship, our social gatherings, places where we can offer God's peace to each other and even to the world around us. How we do hospitality can be a sacred event. It can create sacred moments. It can be a place that they're amongst us, meeting us in our disbelief and doubt. 
if we are open to the mystery of God in our lives, we just might understand that God is right here amongst us. Now, the goal of missional hospitality, there is all kinds of hospitality, but missional hospitality is looking at hospitality out in the world. And it involves transformation. It involves being changed by being in the presence of another. Right? Today, I've heard, and I even said it myself, it was so nice to see life in this building. I am changed by being here today and feeling the energy of others that I have been isolated from. Hospitality, it should change us. Right? We should notice it. Whether we're the guest or the host or we don't even know where we fit in. But we should pay attention. Jesus appears to his followers and he appears in his risen form to reinforce the understanding that he is the Messiah and to illustrate that God's power is greater than any form of human wrongdoing. And as he appears to them, he assumes that role of guest. And by being in hospitality together, their doubt, their confusion, their grief is transformed. It's transformed to wonder and belief. And sometimes it actually takes being in community, community that practices sacred hospitality for us to become spiritually transformed. My hope is that in the days and months ahead, as we are better able to gather as God's people, that we find ways, that we find ways to be both guest and host, and to allow the sacred of God's presence to move amongst us. And in so doing, I hope that it will help us engage perhaps the various forms of grief and loss and isolation and maybe even despair that this pandemic has created amongst us. As we regather, we don't want to just disacknowledge the year before us. We're going to be taking baggage into the future with us because it's been a lot to process. But I hope the sacred act of hospitality will help transform us and renew us and energize us and bring us into God's sacred presence. Amen. As we come together to uh, share our prayers with one another, I will be, um, I think in the future, if, as you come in for attendance, if you have prayer concerns, I'll have you um, give them to whoever's taking attendance, and that way I'll have it all on one sheet. Um, but if anyone wants to verbally share a prayer concern at this time, if you have one, please do so. Hi, Deb. Uh, prayers for Eva Roman and Sandy Goodman. Yes. The family of Pat Ravel. Okay. And um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, continued prayers for Debbie. Okay. Let us come before God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, in this moment and in this time, we are gathered as your people, setting aside the routines of our normal day, the ins and outs of what we have to get done or what we would like to accomplish or even the mundaneness of the chores we have to do. We set aside this time to be in your presence, even though we are always in your presence. But this is the time that we truly acknowledge 
the sacredness of our lives in this world and our relationships with one another. And so we lift up to you the the people that we have named, the families that perhaps are grieving from the loss of loved ones, for those that are still going through tests and various um, appointments, for surgeries or treatments, for various medical conditions. We pray for the brokenness of the world around us, for senseless acts of violence that shatter innocent lives. We've heard too many of those on the news over the past few weeks. Loving God, we pray for the children at the border, for their fearfulness and and, and not knowing what their future beholds and perhaps will they ever even see their parents again. Our world is a mess. It always has been, and that is why you continue to break in and call leaders and create congregations and send people out to do your work. So put a compassionate heart into our beings that we find those places of brokenness around us and that we will bring hospitality to those that are struggling, to those that are suffering, to those that are grieving. And allow us to be transformed as we seek to do your work. And now as your people here in this place, let us unite our voices together and pray what Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Christ is Alive. Thank you. you out into the world world in whichever way you are able to engage it I was in Texas two weeks ago <laughs> got that little twang in there um, 
as I send you out into the world in whatever way you are able to engage it, go out looking for those moments of sacred hospitality, those moments where God's presence is right there. Perhaps as you offer hospitality to a stranger, you'll realize that it is an angel. And now, may the grace and peace of God the Father Almighty, the reconciliation of the Son, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one, now and forever. Amen. Amen.